Hello everyone. In the previous session, we mentioned FASB is the organization that creates GAP. Today, we will discuss the FASB's conceptual framework, which is a set of interrelated objectives and fundamentals that provides foundation for developing and applying consistent accounting standards. That's a lot. Let's explain what this, what this is. First of all, the conceptual framework itself is not GAAP. So what is it then? This conceptual framework serves as a reference point for creating and implementing GAAP. So think of it, guess what? As a framework, as a guide, as a reference that outlines the main ideas and principle used in developing the accounting rule. So it's a reference for developing GAAP, but the conceptual framework itself it is not GAAP. There are four key components of this framework. First is the objective of financial reporting, the qualitative characteristic of useful financial information, and we will discuss those today. Three, the elements of financial statements, which will be discussed in a separate recording, and the recognition and measurement criteria. Now, bear in mind, these topics, FASB's conceptual framework, is covered much more in depth in your intermediate accounting course. As a financial accounting course, you want to be familiar with the elements of financial statements, which we will discuss later, the objective, what's the main objective of the financial reporting. In other words, why do we have financial reporting? What's the purpose of financial reporting? The conceptual framework would outline this. Useful criteria, would look at this in the session, qualitative characteristic. That's important, you need to be familiar with them. At the end of the session, we will work a multiple choice questions from Farhat Lectures to reinforce the concepts. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true-false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. So let's dive into the FASB conceptual framework. It's a system of interrelated objectives and fundamentals that provide the foundation for developing and applying consisting accounting standard. Hold on a second. So is this GAAP? No. GAAP are the rules. We have a conceptual framework. FASB created this framework. Basically, when we develop rules, we look at this framework that will help us provide the foundation for developing and applying consisting accounting standard. So the framework itself is not GAAP. Think of it Think of the framework, I just thought of a, of a word as a reference for GAP. So when you create GAP, you look at this reference. This is the main ideas of the framework. This is how we should create the rules. Its main components, when you're creating rules, you have to keep a few things in mind by following the reference. One is, what is the objective of financial reporting? So when you're creating the rules, keep, keep, keep in mind, what is your objective? So when you create the rules, what is, what's the objective of financial reporting? We're going to see what's the objective of financial reporting. What are some qualitative characteristics? So when you want to write the rules, when you want to write GAP, what should be some qualitative characteristic of the rules? Elements of financial statements. It defines what goes on the financial statements and it helps us with the recognition and measurement. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go over each one of those separately. But those are the main component of the conceptual framework. Starting with the objectives. I'm going to start with the objective of financial reporting. What is the objectives of financial reporting? We kind of know this already, but I'm going to review it. What's the objective? Is to provide information. Just like what's the objective of accounting? Is to provide information to investors and creditors. The primary objective is to provide information to investors and creditors. Why investors and creditors? Because they invest money. Those are the people that risk their capital, risk their money, and any other users in making decisions like suppliers, like anyone. But the main group are investors and creditors. When you write the rules, ask yourself, is this rule helping 
investors and creditors in making a better decision? If, if the answer is yes, you check that box. And you want to make sure this information should help users assess, determine the amount, timing, and uncertainty, the risk of cash inflow. Because as an investor, all what you are interested in is cash. Is this information giving you information about cash, about cash inflow, about when you will receive it? What is the risk of receiving it? And what's the amount you will be receiving based on this information? Obviously, also, the objective of financial reporting is to make sure help the company run the company itself. But the main purpose are investors and creditors. So that's the objective of financial reporting. What are some qualitative characteristics? So when we provide information, when we write GAP, what should we keep in mind? One is the information has to be relevant. And we talked about relevancy in the prior session. What's relevant? Capable of making a difference in someone's decision. Relevant information help users make prediction about future events. It has a predictive value and it has a conformatory value. It help you confirm what you thought prior. And we looked at this characteristic because it's so important in the prior session. The other characteristic is faithful representation. I also discussed this, but I'm going to discuss it briefly. I'm going to add more. The information must be complete. Provide all the information. It cannot be incomplete because if you're hiding something, it's not good. Neutral. It doesn't favor any group. Free from error. Free from major error. In other words, the information should be accurate to reflect economic substance of the transaction and events and conditions of the organization. So that's faithful representation. The information has to be comparable. Users should be able to compare financial information across different entities over different periods because investors will have a menu of options, series of companies to invest from. Well, if the information, if the accounting information is consistent, is comparable, consistency means using the same accounting principle to achieve comparability. If the information is consistent from period to period, then it's comparable across companies. So it has to be consistent and comparable. The information has to be verifiable and verifiable part of faithful representation. In other words, different knowledgeable and independent observers should be able to reach a consensus that a particular depiction is faithfully represented. Think of an audit. If you bring two auditors to audit the company, they should come up to the same conclusion. Because I can verify the information. I know the rules. The rules are consistent. The rules are comparable. It should be good. Also, when you provide information, the information has to be, to be provided on a timely basis. Timeliness. Information should be available to users in time to influence their decision. For example, publicly traded companies, they issue their financial statements on a quarterly basis. Also, the information you provide has to be understandable. Understandability is important. They should be presented clearly and concisely, making it understandable to users who have reasons, reasonable knowledge of business and economic activities. It cannot be too complicated. You got to give them the information that is easy to understand, easy to follow. Those are the qualitative characteristics, not all of them, but the majority of them. Then the conceptual framework, the fine elements the pieces of the puzzle, the pieces of the financial statements. I'm going to list them. Assets, liabilities, equity, revenues, expenses, gains, and losses. Do not worry. We're going to take a look at each one of them. Each one of them explain it separately to be discussed later. Those are the elements. Those are in the conceptual framework. Recognition and measurement. This aspect of the framework deals with the criteria for recognizing and measuring the elements in the financial statements. Now, we did not talk about the elements, but each one of them will have a specific definition. When do we know we have an asset? We're going to discuss this. When? When it fits the definition of an asset. So an item should be recognized in the financial statements if it meets the definition of an element. It's probable that a future economic benefit associated with the item will flow to or will flow from the entity and the item has a cost or value that can be measured measured reliably simply put when we measure something it has to be measurable we can put a number on it we can not see it but we can kind of measure it it's either we're receiving a value or we're giving up a value this is recognition criteria the framework also outlines various bases for measuring elements for example when you measure an element when you put a number measure means like measuring recording something you could record something at historical cost which we're going to see that 
soon in the next recording we're going to explain historical cost you could measure something at current cost it means how much it's worth today realizable value fair value or present value of cash flows now as a financial accounting student, you really don't want you know most of this information you should know the basics of it i just want to give you an idea but the framework explained the recognition criteria when do you recognize something and how to measure that something when we when we recognize it. So measuring measuring means what it means. What number? Is it a hundred dollar? Is it one fifty? Is it five hundred? How do we measure something? We could use historical cost, current cost, realizable value. I mean all what you need to know for now is historical cost. I will explain this in the next recording. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A company provides financial information that help investors predict future cash flows. Which qualitative characteristic is most closely related to? So when the information help investors predict future cash flow, what is that characteristic in the conceptual framework? Is it faithful representation? Is it comparability? Is it relevance? Is it timeliness? So what is faithful representation? Faithful representation means the information is truthful. The information is free from error. The information is complete. But is this, does this deal with predicting future cash flow? No, it should be that, but that's, that's not the criteria for it. B, comparability. It means the information is comparable from year to year. Is this really to predict future cash flow. Not really, because comparability is important. Everything is important, but that's not the definition of it's predicting future cash flow. Comparability means it's comparable. That's all it is. It's I want to look at the information across across period and across companies. It's comparable. Relevance. What is relevance? Relevance means it's relevant for the users to help them do what? Help them predict the future it's relevant for my decision making relevance relevance deals with predicting future cash flow timeliness means what timeliness means give me the information on a timely basis don't wait too long where the information is useless this is what timeliness therefore the answer is c relevance include information that help users make make predictions about future outcome Faithful representation deals with accuracy and completeness and neutrality of the information. Comparability relate to comparing financial information across entities and time period. And the timeliness ensure that the information is available when needed. So relevance, basically the definition of predicting future cash flow. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs that's going to help you whether you are an accounting student CPA candidate, CMA candidate, invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.